Hi everybody, welcome back to my kitchen. I hope you're doing really well today. I'm going to be making today an apple pie the way I make it, but I'm going to be doing it with a little twist. Instead of a full on pie, because I can't find my other pie tin, I'm going to be making like, like little fold over things, I think. Unless I can find that pie tin. We'll see. Let's get to it. All right, I'd like to start by saying I found my tin. So we'll be making a pie. One of my two crusts, I let get to room temperature, but ahead of the other one. And I'm just going to gently, you do not want to do this to a cold crust. Gently unroll it. Like seriously. Before when we did bread, you could beat it up, but this you cannot beat up. This, this will not take a beating not well at all. Yes, I'm aware my nails look janky. I don't have time for that right now. <laughs> okay, we're just going to carefully press this to where there's no gaps by pressing along the crease. And this will be step number one. All right, ignore the cookbook. All right, so now we have our crust. It looks really good, all nice and pressed in there. Let's get to the apples. Here, here I have six Michigan apples. I normally prefer more apples than this because um, I like a fuller pie, but this is what you get when you send the husband to do the shopping and you say you want apples and he's like, okay, and he does and he's like, well, you didn't specify that you wanted like a legit full bag of apples. So I'm just, I'm just gonna peel, taking as few swipes as I can because you don't wanna bruise up the apples more than they already are. So by the time I clip over to this again, you will see these all peel. I don't know when it stopped, but I'm just chopping the apples up pretty roughly. That previous task of peeling these would, took me forever, plus this knife is not the best for this job. Let me see if I can't do a better job with something a little bit less old. We're just chopping the apples up roughly and by the way you can use whatever apples you want in apple pie. You do not have to use Granny Smith or you don't have to use Michigan apples like I am. Whatever apples you prefer. I just personally despise Granny Smith apples and I hate an apple pie that's filled with it. <laughs> I'm not shy about it. But this happens to be my husband's favorite kind of pie and he loves how I make it, so no complaints there. Like I said, we're just rough cutting because some of the pieces then will stay more firm. Let me know if you want my um, applesauce, homemade applesauce recipe too, because I'll record it. I also have a gadget video that I want to try out that's coming up. This knife's working a lot better. Oh, come on you. I still have to be extra careful not to chop a finger. I'll also make my potato soup if you'd like, my cheese and potato soup. That one's a bit more of an intense recipe though. It requires quite a few potatoes. But I'll do it for you if you want. I got the recipe actually off of Facebook. Of course, no matter how rough you cut your apples, please be careful of your fingers at all times. I actually sliced through my fingernail. It was a good thing my knife was really dull because I almost cut my thumb off once cutting up a potato. I love watching these videos of people doing everything so perfectly and everything is like pristine looking and all the pieces of like whatever they're cutting is perfectly cubed and I'm just like right and that took you forever of prep work ahead of time didn't it? And I do use a garbage bag method by the way where I've got hooked up to this whole everything. There's a garbage bag right near me at all times that I'm constantly scraping things into. And I have um, Clorox wipes that I use to disinfect surfaces. So don't worry about the cleanliness of what my kitchen is if I'm using the countertop directly. Because clean cleanliness is key when you're cooking in a kitchen. No matter what though, this pie is going to be waiting a while before it can be cooked because I've got a uh, cherry tart in the oven right now. Oh! 
Okay. I do hate it, by the way, when my camera stops working on me like that. I'm checking regularly to see that it's still going. I have three quarters cup brown sugar here. Two tablespoons of flour. Because I've got a little two tablespoon scoop. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Here, I've got the coolest thing in the whole wide world. This is a pinch, a smidge, and a dash. So I just need a dash of nutmeg using my exact measurement. The coolest, it's the most amazing. Don't ask me where I got it, I have no idea. A dash of salt. And of course I've got butter here. I need two tablespoons. Bam. What I need to do here is I need to gently mix all of this together. Nice and easy. Then to my apples, once it's all nice and Mixed together, all good and even. I just sprinkle it over, grab a spatula, and just start mixing. It's going, the, the chemicals that are in the uh, seasonings are going to reduce the apples a little bit, which will help the, the seasoning stick to them even better. Um, the recipe can't, you can add um a teaspoon you can add a teaspoon of lemon juice but that the only benefit lemon juice has is to keep the apples from going brown and you really don't have that to worry about when you're in a household with uh, with apple pie lovers i've never had an apple pie go bad it always gets devoured before all of that so then, we just give that a good old stir, make sure it's all nice and kind of just marrying together beautifully. And this, by now, is all nice and room temperature. That's our other crust. I did not make my crusts, I bought them, duh. We're just going to gently gently do not spill these all over yourself because trust me i've been there i've done that it happens it is not fun we are going to gently just scrape whoops we lost some i'll put them in there this counter is extremely clean you'd better bet your boots i keep this counter clean i use it for everything we just carefully scrape that in there Try to press it all out a little bit so there's no real empty spots. But it pretty much fills neatly. We carefully open up our other crust. Or haphazardly, whatever. Musical Concerto, brought to us by Brandon. We ever so gently begin rolling this out. This is a cheaper crust, it's a little older too, so it's gonna crack a little more, but that's okay, we still love it. Oh yes, the butter. You were wondering about that, I'm sure. Why did she put two tablespoons of butter off to the side? which I'm going to use this because it'll make it easier to clean later because I don't want to have to. I'm going to cube it into four pieces like that. Peel that back a bit. Stick a piece right there. Stick a piece right there. Push that back over. Pull that back. There and there. If you put butter in pie, that's to... a great idea. <laughs> I think so too, Brandon. I got to go back to the show. Okay, you go back to the show, okay? 
we're just going to roll this and crimp it. I know they're different colored crusts. They're also a different brand from each other. The bottom one is Pillsbury. The top one is some generic brand. Huh. Ignore that. Accidents happen. We're just folding it over and pressing it together. We'll seal it better in just a second. I'll show you. Of course, everybody knows how to do this, and if you don't, you must be new to living on your own. We're going to take a fork and basically press the seal all the way around. There we go. And now we just... I do it that way so that I can get as much ventilation throughout. You do not want your pie to explode. Now I've preheated the oven. It's at 400 degrees. Uh, it was at 425 for the other thing. Uh, it will cook for 60 minutes, so an hour. In case you're wondering, no, I am not some sort of idiot. I'm putting my pie on a plate on a tray. And we're just going to slide that in there and start that up. Now, I want to show you something really cool. I only had one crust left. So what I did here, and this is like a little bonus thing, but it's so simple. There's no need to do a whole video for it. I just took the one extra crust I had, put it into a pan, making sure that the edges were all spread out. I poured in a can of cherry pie filling. Only one can. You know, two cans would make... A full pie. I folded this over and crimped it to kind of form an almost crust. Then I brushed the crust with egg whites and then cooked it at 425 Fahrenheit for 40 minutes and this is how it turned out. Looks beautiful. I'll see you when the pie is done. This is where life gets exciting folks. Yep, I was right to put that there. We had some spillage, but look at that pie. Now doesn't that just look delicious? Absolutely in love. It turned out perfect. It's a little drippy on the side, but that's expected. There's always going to be because apples reduce. But I think it turned out darn good. Now I'm just going to let it cool and then we'll enjoy it. This one over here has been cooling and it looks absolutely delicious as well. And that's not even hot anymore. I mean, that's like comfortable. So, I just did my entire outro without the camera running. I hope you liked this apple pie video. And like I said before, I really like making recipes that are very simple. That's why I love this one so much because, well, I'm kind of lazy when it comes to cooking. And I don't want to spend my entire day cooking and cleaning. So... If you liked this, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and the bell if you haven't yet, if you're so inclined. I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye!